Just a quick precursor to this video. Wasn't until after I'd actually completed all of the recording and I went to edit it all and put it all together, I didn't actually realize I forgot to hit record on this large camera here. So please stick with it. About two minutes into the video, you will actually see the tutorial itself. But I normally like to have a little picture of me down in the corner so I can turn to the camera and emphasize certain points to you. You're not going to get that in this one, but I think the tutorial is good enough for you to enjoy. So um, hopefully next time I'll remember to switch this one on. So hello everyone, I'm Michael Ingledew. I'm all about making you successful with your technical documentation and technical information strategies. This week, we're talking S1000D DMRL. So the S1000D DMRL, either called the data management requirement list or the data module requirement list, depending on which version of S1000D you're in. And I have seen it called other things, but uh, for the purpose of today's tutorials, those are the two definitions that we're talking about. Now, for those of you who don't know, the DMRL is all about how we scope out what it is we're going to be producing for our S1000D project. So. I'm going to show you today how a component manufacturer may want to or have to get involved with the DMRL creation process. To do that, I'm going to be using some pieces of software. I am not being endorsed, sponsored, or in any other way compensated if you go off and download the trials or ultimately go and buy this pieces of software. Uh, I have to say that for YouTube guidelines. Now, the DMRL is a, as I've already said, is a document that we actually agree between partners and suppliers on an S1000D project. And there's a couple of different ways that we can work with DMRLs. Depending on where we are in the supply chain depends on how we may get involved with the DMRL production. So let's jump into my software. So this slide that you're seeing up on screen right now is actually an extract from uh, one of my training courses. And we talk about a simplified version of a supply chain. And we talk about the platform at the highest level. So whether that's a ship, an armored vehicle, a submarine, a satellite system, an aircraft, anything along those lines, it is comprised of multiple systems and subsystems and sub subsystems. So we've simplified that here. We've said this particular platform has a, a propulsion system. It has a fuel system, a hydraulic system, communication system and lighting system. It could have weapons and lots of other stuff. So what we do is we look at now where a component manufacturer may sit with inside this. So within our hydraulic system, we're specifically focusing on the, the pump, the tank, the filter, the indications and the valve. And I know that some of you would prefer in a hydraulic system that we call the tank a reservoir. That's up to you. I'm just using this for illustrative purposes. Now, of course, if we're focusing as a pump manufacturer, a hydraulic pump manufacturer, we may have a bunch of suppliers too that might be providing us with washers and bolts and maybe glass viewers or micro filters or anything along those lines. And below them, there may be material manufacturers as well. The DMRL in the main normally stops at this kind of pump tank filter level, the production process. So we're going to focus on the pump. Now, the DMRL, as I've said, is that focal point. It's the center point. And what may happen, and, and, and I see it more often than not, is the DMRL creation process is actually pushed down the supply chain. So what will happen is that maybe the platform creator will know that it has to create a load of content. It know it has all of these systems and it will ask all of the systems guys to say, look, you guys go and create us a DMRL. So we know what kind of content that we need. And those systems guys will likely push it down also to the 
component manufacturers and say, right now, this is the kind of information we want and this is the depth of information we want. Please go and define something for us so we can then add it all together, give it to our end customer and they can say, yes, that's the content we want. Now, so there was a couple of key points there. We have to, before we get into the DMRL creation process, we need to know essentially what type of information we're being asked to produce. And we also need to be aware of the depth of information that we're being asked to produce. There's no point in giving somebody a disassembly procedure for a hydraulic pump if they're never going to do it. And it's only ever done in some specialist workshop somewhere by us, the actual manufacturer. There's no point giving them that piece of information. So the DMRL will work in slightly different ways at slightly different levels. And there are different ways that we actually can work with and integrate and merge DMRLs as well. So it's important to say that at this stage, we're well before we are actually buying or looking to buy or invest in any kind of S1000D solution. I'm coming at this from a component manufacturer who is likely to be coming to S1000D new or fresh and is not really familiar with the concepts of S1000D. So therefore, what we could do if we wanted to is just say to our component manufacturers, go and create us an XML document. There are tools out there. We can give you some schemas. Go and create us a DMRL that way. Nobody wants to work like this, especially the further you go down the information supply chain. And I talk a lot about the information supply chain when we are on my training courses. Now, this is uh, XML Spy. I use XML Spy. It's a great tool if all you care about is creating XML, valid XML structures. And if we wanted to, we could go and create a DML within XML Spy, and we could do that very, very quickly, very, very easily if we knew what we were doing. Unfortunately, a lot of people will look at this view and they will go, no, thank you. I'm really not interested in this, which is why when I'm training my customers, we look at something called Mind Manager. Now, if you didn't watch my previous tutorial on how I use Mind Manager, I'll put the link up above in the card. There are some alternative tools out there. I'll put a link to Mind Manager down below. Now, so what I like to do is that at the absolute center of our DMRL creation process, I like to put the hydraulic pump in the middle here. And then we start going around the outside. What kind of information are we going to need to produce? So we're going to have to have some sort of technical information around dimensions and weights and measurements and that kind of thing. Tech specs, operation parameters, that kind of stuff we might need to put together. Some descriptions, so some functional descriptions, crew descriptions. Um, let me just add another description if we wanted another description. And you can see that here at this point, we're now actually starting to put together the kind of information that we would expect to see within a DMRL. Now, we also have to be aware at this level up here, we have to be cognizant of the fact that we might be required to produce something that's external to the actual component itself. And what I mean by that is we may be asked to produce some CIRs, we may be asked to produce them some applicability tables. We might be asked to actually include some Brex information. We might be asked to invariably to create a publication module. This is outside of the scope of content that we would produce traditionally for our component. But there may be some actual S1000D requirements placed on us by the project that we need to be aware of. Where would you find this information? contracts, business rules, those kind of things will tell us the kind of content that we need to be producing outside of that, because this would also need to find its way into our DMRL. Now, there are other things, especially if we go deeper, like the publication module, what kind of front matter information are we going to produce? So we need to be aware of that as well. So now, of course, this right now is not a DMRL. But what it is, is a great way for us to be able to visually say to 
our engineers or to somebody in QA or somebody outside of the actual technical publications process. This is the content that we're going to produce. Are you happy with it? OK, but now we can actually go a stage further if we wanted to. And you can see that here now taking the the um, previous mind map, I can actually if I added here maybe a crew description, maybe we want to tell the crew some specific information that they may want to be aware of around hydraulic pump. But what I've done is in Mind Manager here, I've created something called a tag and I can add a data module tag here. And now what that's done is it said that this is actually going to be a specific data module. Why is that important, Michael? Well, because in this particular piece of software that I use, I can actually export this into something where we're now getting closer to what our DMRL should actually be looking like. So we're going to go for a custom export on this one. And I'm going to say, do not include icons. And all I want is I just want you to show me things that are with the tag DM. I can include if so, if I have more information associated with this, which we'll talk about in future tutorials, I can actually include those two. And I can include all properties or none. Again, we'll talk about that in a future tutorial. We can actually have some formatting output as well, which is actually really quite important. And we can then just export it. Now, I've already exported it, but I'll save it again. So what it's doing now is it's taken all of that mind map piece of information that I've put together and it's exported it to something that actually now looks a little bit like this. So now we are in the start of where we can start putting together our thoughts around the DMRL. So here we've gone through, identified here areas where we know we're going to have to actually produce data modules. So now you can see we're starting to scope out exactly what it is we want to do. Of course, again, this is still not a DMRL but it is still a document where our external engineers, our external QA, our customers can read this and go, actually, yes, this looks exactly like the kind of stuff that we're looking for. But then what we can do, something that we use a lot here at uh, TDW, is we then have a DMRL template and that we can then transfer that content that was exported from our mind manager and we can drop it into our DMRL template for the actual production of an XML file if we wanted to. Because now we can actually start adding in all of the code information that we might need for the specific instances of our data modules. So that's a very simple way that we can go from defining our DMRL in a visual way, coming to Excel, going into a DMRL template, which then ultimately our S1000D vendors will and should be able to handle for them to import into their CSDB for us then to be able to create if we wanted to this lovely structure for us so we don't have to go off and actually manumatically create all of this content. Now, if you want to have a look at this file, this is actually available on the S1000D dot org website so you can go and have a look at that for yourself so this is how i go from a mind map in mind manager i export it out to excel and then i transpose it into something that send up to their particular customer partner whoever it might be and of course a lot of this information the the codification strategy may not necessarily be available to us because actually in the early stages of a project 
this is really what we're interested in. We really want to know the type of information and the level of information that's going to be delivered to us from suppliers or component suppliers or whoever it might be. Now, why is this actually really important? Well, if we go back to our supply chain, a typical supply chain here is that these guys that produce these hydraulic pumps might actually be supplying the actual pump off to another platform or 20 different platforms, all with their own S1000D requirements, all with their own depth of information requirements, all with their own codification strategies. So that means that what they can do is they can maintain a mind map here share that with their customer and say look this is what we're that this is what we're going to do there's no s1000d codes in here there's nothing in here that's specific to a project the customer can then say yes that's what we want we can then export it out into something that they can look at in a and they can share it internally in their organization and then ultimately we can get out to that dmrl if that's what's needed. So that's the process I go through when I'm training a component manufacturer on a the role of the DMRL and how we can produce it. We can go and use commercial off the shelf software to get us a long way down the road to where we need to be. How do you work with S1000D DMRLs? Let me know. I'd be really keen to know. If you enjoyed this type of tutorial, looking at the tools that I use and the mindsets and the processes that I use for supporting my customers, give us a thumbs up. If you want to learn more about the intricacies of the DMRL and you need to learn how it's managed through life and how it's integrated and shared and those kind of things, consider taking a TDIQ subscription where we look at things like the DMRL and management of the DMRL and the kind of things that may be higher up in the supply chain we need to be aware of. I'm Michael Ingledew. I'm all about making you successful with your technical documentation and technical information strategies. I hope you found it useful. Hope you found it interesting. Until the next one.